10. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Amen. 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 Hebrews 6, verses 11 and 12. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews Amen. chapter 6, Amen. verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Amen. Verse 15, and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Verse 16, for men verily swear by the greater, and, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto his heirs a promise, the in Immobility of his counsel confirms it by an oath. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consul consultation who have five for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Amen. as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steady fast, and which ethered into the within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made in high priest for even after the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enter the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing on reading, the hearing, and the doing of His word. Okay, Hebrews six, verses nineteen and twenty, out of the Amplified Bible. This hope, this confident assurance we have as an anchor of the soul, it cannot slip and it cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it. A safe and steadfast hope that enters within the veil of the heavenly temple, that most holy place in which the very presence of God dwells, where Jesus has entered in advance as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Chapter 6, verse, verse 19. Magandang balita, Biblia. Ang pag-asa ito ang siyang matibay at matatag na angkla ng ating buhay. At ito'y umabot hanggang sa kabila ng tabi ng templo hanggang sa dakong kapanang kanala. This is the key verse, Hebrews 6, 19 and 20. Chúng ta có hy vọng này như cái niu vững vàng, phần chất của linh hồn đi vào bên trong bức màn là nơi thánh đức Giêsu đã ngự vào như đứng tiên phong đại diện cho chúng ta khi ngài trở nên vị thượng đế đời đời theo dòng mên chi cd amen amen cette clé se trouve dans le livre Hébreux chapitre 6 verset 19 à 20 et lui second cette espérance nous la possédons comme une arche de l'âme sûre et solide elle pénètre au-delà du voile. Là où Jésus est entré pour nous comme précurseur, 
et a été fait souverain sacrificateur pour toujours selon l'ordre de Melchisedec. Amen. Amen. All right. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson. This lesson is for June the 23rd, 2024. The title of the lesson is Full Assurance. It's coming from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. As Hebreos, capítulo 6, versos 9 al 20. Amen. Thank you for all our readers and translations. We'll have our opening prayer. Let us pray. Father, cleanse our hearts and minds to willingly receive your words. Then hide your saving words in our hearts that we sin not against you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Santayo, Ama, Inishing Mo Ang Amin Ba Puso, At Isipan, Upang Pusang Lo, At Tanggapin Ang Yung Mga Salita. Pagkatapos sa Itago Ang Yung Mga Salita, Na Nagliligtas Sa Aming Mga Puso, Na Hindi Kami Nagkakasala Laban Sa Yo. Sa Pangalan Ni Jesus, Kami Ay Nananalami. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you for our prayers. Okay, the devotion of the day is Psalm 23. So everybody knew that first uh, verse of Psalm 23 is, The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall want. So the title of that whole chapter is, The Lord is my shepherd. And hey, if, you, if, if it's a good shepherd, he's going to take care of the sheep. There'll be a lot of wolves trying to get a sheep and eat him up. But that shepherd's going to take care of them. Other animals may try too, lions, tigers, and bears. But that shepherd, oh no, he ain't getting one of his shepherd's sheep. You know, so the Lord is my shepherd. If God on your side, who can stand against? Hallelujah. So know that the sheep has wants for nothing. They, they're going to have water, they're going to have the grass to eat, but they, they needs will be filled. Hallelujah. So exactly how it is with, the, with, with us, with the Lord, our needs shall be met, filled, and even exceeded. Hallelujah. But when we tie, he'll open up the windows of heaven that there won't be enough room to even receive the blessing. Pour it out. Psalm, pour the oil in the, in the presence of the enemies. So it don't matter who's staying away. When it's your turn to get your blessing, the Lord has what's for you is for you. Amen. The book of Hebrews is where our lesson is coming from. It's going to be chapter 6. Uh, the book of Hebrews is broken down in the study Bible to four different sections. But the bottom line is, it's all the superiority of Christ. The superiority of Christ. So it don't matter whether it's the person Christ, uh, the first four chapters, uh, the uh, priesthood of Christ, which is 5 through 10, uh, the superiority of the power of Christ, which is 11 through 13. And then the end of 13 has to conclude benedictions. Now, uh, the Hebrews, uh, Hebrews is broken up further. Uh, there's a parenthetical warning. Uh, don't degenerate from Christ. Uh, that's ver uh, verses 5, 11 through 6, 20. And that's where our lesson is coming from, 6, 9 through 20. So a parenthetical is a statement. Uh, it's one that explains or qualifies something such that you can put that in uh, parentheses. <laughs> to clarify, hey, this emphasizes, oh yeah. And then uh, we don't want to degenerate uh, having a loss of the physical, mental, or moral qualities considered for normal and observable, desirable, showing evidence of decline. No, 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 we don't want to degenerate Christ. And some of you, yeah, we might go through these uh, situations. And remember, a lot of situations is only a test. So it's not to draw uh, you away from Christ, but hey, that should connect you to Christ even more so. Hallelujah. Hey, if you don't have certain things hindering you, hey, focus on Christ and you'll be all right. Okay, the uh, first verse is nine. But beloved, we are persuaded better things for, of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. So 
uh, two verses that precede that of uh, seven and eight, uh, not to go on to uh, fruitful ministry result in loss of a reward. Now, we don't have to do stuff for the reward of salvation because that's a, a gift. Hallelujah. But, but I mean, we don't want to, what, add to the sin that we already didn't put there in the plate, you know. Uh, that grace may abound much more, you know, we want to refrain from that. Uh, the woman who was found in adultery, uh, the Lord, you know, say he who cast the first stone, uh, he who has no sin cast the first stone. And when they all dropped these stones, then he turned to the woman and said, woman, where are thy accusers? And she said, there are none. And he said, neither do I, but sin no more. So he didn't say, well, go back to where you was. No, he didn't say that. He, he said, sin no more. So help us, Lord, to sin no more. Uh, six, nine, expression of confidence. Uh, though he speaks severely things that accompany salvation, the fruit in a Christian life. So there's extra rewards, a crown of this, a crown of that. So we see a bunch of crowns throughout the Bible for uh, it's a reward. So we want to, we don't want to lose our reward. We don't want to show off and be proud, uh, like pray in front of everybody. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm praying. Look, look, look. Now they have their reward. You know, <laughs> right? So uh, well in the closet secretly, but he'll reward thee openly. But at the same time, we want to uh, forsake the assembly of, of the righteous. We want to be in that city. Because the Lord is coming back for a church without a spot, wrinkle, or blemish. What, like we said last lesson? So we want to be here, be ready when he comes. So like the women with the lamp oil, okay, hey, the virgins, uh, five didn't have enough lamp oil, but five did. So the ones that were ready, Hey, when they opened the doors of the church, they went on in. But the ones who had to go get more oil, well, now you had to deviate from the main course. So by the time you came back, uh, it was too late. Now the door is shut. And you're going to be uh, cast out into outer darkness where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hallelujah. So we want to be like the five versions who prepare, who's always prepared, having a lamp oil. Verse 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your word about and labor of love which he has showed toward his name. So remember, anything that we do for the Lord will stand. Uh, what's that, 2 Corinthians 15? Uh, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. 11 uh, says, we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. So the race is not given to the swift nor battle to the strong. Okay, so it's not a, a fast thing, how fast we can do it and, and then we all out of breath because it's a marathon, it's more of a marathon, right? Uh, I found that out the hard way, y'all. I ain't gonna tell you no walk stories right now, but you know, hey, you run a marathon and, and if you're not conditioned for that, uh, you might start off fast, but boy, you end up walking, crawling. <laughs> Whereas if you pace yourself, you know, you can kind of get a steady pace and go faster overall. So, hey, we, we, we wanna, we wanna, ourselves, but do the right thing. Hallelujah. And something it might take a little bit more time, but when we do the right thing, yeah, it don't matter. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, Twelve. That ye be not slothful, but followers of men, of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So that's the whole thing. We want those promises that the Lord promised Abraham. The nation shall be blessed. Mm, hallelujah. So we want to let them blessings keep coming. Hallelujah. When praises go up, blessings come down. Lord, keep those blessings coming despite of uh, hallelujah. But help us, Lord. Hallelujah. To be your people, you be our God. All right, 13. For when God made the promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. So, you know, I know we hear people say, oh, you know, you swear that's the truth. And then in court, you swear that's the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. All right. So, uh, yeah, so no greater. So there's no greater. So God swear by himself, Abraham, this is it. And and it's because of his obedience, not only that nations are blessed. It's because of Adam's disobedience, all, all of us have a curse. So born in iniquity, shaping and sin. Ooh, uh, Psalm 51. All right, uh, 14 saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. So of course, you know, when we look at We'll start off with Abraham. Abraham and Sarah, they had Isaac. Isaac had, what, Jacob and Esau. So that, that was actually two nations 
two separate nations that sprung up. So Jacob is Israel, right? And Esau had the Edomites and, and Haiti. It, it might have been enemies or whatever, but they were still two nations. I mean, well, both of them came from Abraham. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, 14 saying, Surely blessing our bless thee, and multiplying our multiply thee. 15 says, And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So, patiently endure. Patiently endure. So, remember, guys, everything going to come like a, a pizza in the microwave, a cold piece of pizza in the microwave to eat it up. You know, some things take a little time, so we have to have that patience. And, and what last lesson was that the God of patience and consolation. So patience, that, that word is patience, working, faith, faith, it, you know, uh, it's, it, it, patience plays a part. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, for men verily swear by the greater and oath, and for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. So it's something about the Bible. It's like, hey, when you see a, a Bible verse, you, you, you can't go against that. You know, and if you do, shame on you. Now, if you need clarification, understand it. Okay, well, that's one thing. Yeah, you ask questions because you don't want somebody just trying to slip one over on you. And the devil, that's what he'll try to do, too. He'll use a, a, a truth, then he'll put a little lie in it to get his way. And, you know, <laughs> we, we, we don't want to do that. Hallelujah. We want to tell the whole truth, not the truth, so help us what? The Lord. Hallelujah. Moving on to 17. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Immutable, unchanging over time, or unable to be changed. So God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So uh, Hebrews 13, 8. So we're talking about Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, hey. His values, his structure, it don't matter. Ooh, technology, don't matter. The principles gonna still be the same. So if, if we lie, cheat, and steal, uh, we're in trouble. But if we are truthful and, and uh, it's true with evil, all right, we're, we're on the right track. Uh, moving on, 18 says, by two, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. So they go that word hope again. And immutable. God is immutable. Unchanging. Jesus Christ. So thank you, Lord, for who you are. Unchanging. Hold to his hands. God's unchanging hands. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hands. All right, the key verses of the last two verses of this lesson. So that's Hebrews uh, 9, 19 through 20, Hebrews 6, Capitulo 6, Versículos 19 al 20. All right, 19. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the well, the veil. And uh, 20 says, Whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made a high priest, for even after the order of Melchizedek. So, a couple of things here. First of all, uh, we have hope, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Hope, and an anchor is like anchor with the ships, they tie into something that's not moving. So even though the waves and the water moving on the top, but an anchor is supposed to hold you fast in one location. And that's what, hey, the anchor of the soul. No, we don't want to deviate. A lot of things happening out here in the world today, uh, different technologies and, uh, you know, some things vulgar, some things uh, sexual, sensual, uh, whatever they may be. But, hey, we could, what? When we put God first and resist the devil, he will flee. Hallelujah. So we got to be firm. we got to be anchored in the law. So both sure and steadfast. So steadfast, not moving. So we got to be unwavering. We don't want our faith to be wavering, right? right? Uh, and then the forerunner. So John the Baptist was a forerunner for Jesus. He, he made the announcement. He, he was there. He told us, hey, Christ is coming. Hallelujah. Repent. 
for the kingdom of God is at hand. So the forerunner for God himself, the forerunner for us is in it. Even Jesus made a high priest, even at the order of Melchizedek. So in the Old Testament, the people had to wait outside. The priest had to cleanse himself, make another sacrifice to cleanse the people. Then he went to make the sacrifices uh, to, for forgiveness of sins for the, for the land, or for the people, or whatever he had to do from there. What he did, he went behind the, he went into the Holy of Holies. And it wasn't everybody, all the priests that just ran up in there, the high priest had to do with them. And then he had to be right. And what they did, they tied ropes on them and had bells on them and stuff. So now look, you be dancing when you go in there. We don't hear them bells, we're pulling you out. <laughs> uh, you guys that dealt with H2S, you know that there ain't nothing to play with. You go running up in there, you may not be running out. <laughs> so you, you have to take precautions. So the priest in the high days, he, he had bells on his clothes and, and, they, and they had the rope on him. So like, like I say, if he wasn't right, he died before the, the holy, in the Holy of Holies and they had to pull him out. But hey, if he was right, hey, uh, Israel rejoiced and there was a reason to be glad because they were good for a year uh, with, with forgiveness of sins. So when God sent his only begotten son as a perfect sacrifice, hallelujah, now we can go to the Holy of Holies through Jesus Christ, hallelujah, because he went there. He was the forerunner. So he had already went, been there, done that. Now the veil is torn. Hallelujah. So when he died, the veil was rent. So now we can go in there and put our uh, supplications and prayer before the Lord. Hallelujah. And he hears our cry and answers by and by. Be patient with him because he's patient with us. Hallelujah. So we thank the Lord for, for his patience. And we thank the Lord that we have hope in the Lord, something that's immutable, not unwavering. Hallelujah. Let our faith be unwavering. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We'll have our final prayer. Sorry. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the certainty of your promises. Promises based on your son's work on the cross. May there ever be a reminder to us that you will do things you promised. Even as we anticipate the return of Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. 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 Okay, thank you for our prayers. Thanks again to all of our readers. Uh, this is Men's Month, the month of June, where we're picking on all men to read the scripture. So thanks to all the guys that's bold enough to read these scriptures. Uh, also, uh, thanks to our pastor, Eddie Cross III, for using his church, opening the doors of the church so we can get these lessons out to where they need to be. And we just pray that everyone continues to... Uh, Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And in some kind of way, you know, give the Lord some time. So whether it's in the church body, which is, is the preferable way, but, you know, uh, to watch the lesson because some of you guys still do work offshore and you're not able to just go into a, a church home like, like that. So we pray that you continue to participate in the lessons. Uh, if, if you're not on the email, we can, we can email you the uh, paper lessons, uh, a little word search puzzle, and of course, you always get the video clip with that as well. So uh, thank each and every one of you guys uh, uh, for participating in the lesson the way that you participate in it. And thanks to all you guys that sent in the clips uh, and have, you know, to, to keep the lessons going. Uh, our next lesson is going to be uh, June the 30th. It's going to be entitled Fearless Witness. It's coming from Acts chapter 26 verses 1 through 11. So Acts chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. So we just thank all the guys, again, for your participation, because we take a little boldness for Christ. And the Lord, the Lord is a reward of him, that diligently seek him. And he, our labor, what is not in vain in the Lord. So y'all keep up the good work and, and just keep the Lord in mind. Acknowledge him in all our ways, and he'll direct your paths. So in Jesus' name, be blessed, you and your family. Amen. Thank you.